students take the critical laws they learn and put them into practice on the high seas. The U.S. Coast Guard boards and inspects hundreds of vessels each day. They range from large commercial tankers to re recreational boats. Boarding team members go through intense training before stepping foot on a ship. In part one of our series, School of Force, Coast Guard Petty Officer Adam Egger shows us what it takes to be a boarding officer. The Coast Guard's Maritime Law Enforcement Academy sits quietly in Charleston, South Carolina, as part of the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, a center that combines many agencies within the Department of Homeland Security. Here, students silently scour over laws they must enforce and procedures they must follow. That is, until the real learning begins. The Academy was founded in December of 2004, and I think the success uh, for the Academy speaks to itself with regards to uh, the things we've been able to achieve in just a short period of time. To get a better understanding of what boarding officers do in the fleet, we set out with the boarding team from Coast Guard Station Charleston. On this chilly day, our focus was on recreational safety boardings. About 20 minutes into our ride, we spotted a small charter fishing boat and conducted an inspection. Thankfully, these boaters didn't mind a visit from their local Coast Guardsmen and had all their required gear and licenses on board. Yep, we're good. Thank you. However, exchanges between the Coast Guard and Mariners doesn't always go as smoothly. That's where training from the academy comes in. Uh, here we, we offer essentially five courses. The boarding officer course, which is our, our basic course, is about six weeks. That's the foundation course, I like to call it. We have a boarding team member course, which is two weeks, which is a small part of the boarding officer course. It's for people that will be part of the team, but not necessarily the boarding officer. Maritime patrol officer courses, where we partner with other states and territories, U.S. territories throughout the United States, as well as um, our radiation detection course, which is a level two course uh, in conjunction with our level one uh, operators out in the field. Everyone in the Coast Guard, every boarding officer is trained to the level, first level, level one, but we train folks to level two, which helps them identify and locate possible sources of any type of radiation uh, emitting devices that may be trying to get into the United States. The importance of the academy reaches across the Coast Guard's missions and responsibilities as the service continues to grow and evolve in the post 9-11 world. The, uh, biggest advantage is to bring in everyone here to the Maritime Law Enforcement Academy in Charleston is that we've been able to more than double our throughput of boarding officers. We've grown from 400 boarding officers approximately graduated in Yorktown, Virginia, to this year we'll graduate close to a thousand here at uh, the Maritime Law Enforcement Academy. The success of the Academy was further demonstrated in November 2007 when it became the Knight Center to receive federal law enforcement training accreditation. But the key is that you've got to meet 73 standards of excellence when it, it, with respect to training. Uh, so what we're held to is it's a, uh, it's a set of standards that talk about how we not only conduct our training, how we evaluate our training, how our training is put together, what types of things we train are really decided by the agencies. The Academy joined training centers for the Secret Service, Federal Air Marshals, and the Naval Criminal Investigative Service for meeting these standards of excellence. Coast Guard Petty Officer Adam Eggers, Pentagon Channel News. Tuesday on Around the Services, students learn how to react during realistic training scenarios in a classroom and on board small boats.